Hey Westlake, we just wanted to send you a quick video with an update on the youth. Unfortunately, we can't be there at the AGM today because we have a seminar for parents and teens tonight at the same time, so that is where we are. But we wanted to give you a quick update on what has been happening uh, this fall with youth, and it's been a really good fall. Yeah. Uh, and we feel like things are kind of getting back to where they were pre-COVID a little bit, which is really exciting. Uh, so with our older youth, we've seen 14 different students coming on Wednesday night and averaging about five per night, which is a good solid number and it just feels like there's a good group and growth amongst them, which mm -hmm. is really fun. And then for Epic, um, which is our 11 to 14 age group, we've seen um, 16, 16 different students. Chloe's really excited about that number. She'll join us in a second. Um, and averaging about seven or eight every night, um, which has been a positive growth from the beginning of the year um, and even from last year. Um, Chloe has been the mascot of that group and the older youth group as well. Yeah, and then on Sundays it's been really fun as well. We've had uh, students coming over here to the office with us during the service, and we've had about five per week as an average, uh, but seeing a good number of students coming to that as well. Uh, we've also had really good uh, area-wide events this term, which has been a lot of fun. We've mm -hmm. had two different worship nights that saw over 35 students right. come to each of those, which was really cool. The last one was uh, this past weekend, which was just mm -hmm. a lot of fun uh, at the Oratoire mm -hmm. in Geneva and, mm -hmm. and just had a really good time together. Yep. And then coming up, um, we're trying to do more service projects this year. Monthly is our goal, but it hasn't worked out quite monthly. But um, our first service project is coming up uh, this coming Saturday uh, with Samedi du Partage, which many of you know about uh, collecting food and hygiene items for those in need in our area. So we'll do that on Saturday from 11.30 to 3. Um, and hopefully you have a good group come out to help. So thank you uh, for all of your support and just the work with the youth. Um, because we do have this little one, we would still love uh, volunteers to help us out from time to time. So if you're available on a Wednesday night, Friday night, Sunday night, <laughs> Um, to help out, we would greatly appreciate that as sometimes she takes up a lot of uh, energy and effort and we have to kind of divide and conquer a little bit yep. as well. We've, a, we've appreciated, Varenka Kunzman has come to help us on Friday nights with Epic and um, Elaine Leakey has helped with meals as well with the older youth. So thank you mu very much and we appreciate more help if you can, if you can give it. <laughs> All right, have a good day. Bye. See ya. Good evening, Westlake. For those of you who have been with us a while, you know that my name's Elaine and I'm working as the Family and Children's Ministry Director with our community here, um, which has been challenging over this last season. Once again, going through COVID is not an easy time, um, but I'd love to give you just a little bit of a report as to what's uh, been happening with the children, with the families over this season, so that you can continue to pray with us and continue to Trust God for the, the things that he wants to do amongst us in this season. So, yeah, it's been a challenging time through COVID. And one of the things that I focus on or I have been doing a lot is helping um, families transition into our community. We've welcomed a number of young families in um, into Switzerland who've been moved with um, different jobs moving. Some have come in, some have gone out. Um, and I've been helping that transition for people, helping them live that through well. Um, so you know many of the families that you're getting to know and we had to say goodbye to some as well, which is really sad. Just being part of their process as they walk through this season is part of what I do. And we've also been able to run the Crazy Games program, which is part of the Kids Games um, program over the summer. It's a children's camp for kids between the ages of seven and 14. Um, and after the age of 14, the kids get to become junior coaches and then coaches as they get a bit older. Um, we welcomed into the camp this year, 214 children, um, where we had a week of teaching them about Jesus in the morning, um, ca crafts, games, activities in the afternoon. Um, and I do the administration for those programs and we ran them in Roll and in Glon this year, which was really great. Um, so that was a, a really special time, especially with all the restrictions that we've gone through as families in this season, being able to gather together in person um, with specific um, rules and regulations that we had to follow. We didn't have any COVID cases break out amongst us this year, which was a real answer to prayer. 
So thank you for accompanying us through that program. Several of our families in our community participated and had a really great time. With the Kingdom Kids program, I'm sure most of you are praying. We have regularly been having about six kids in the program on a Sunday, which is a small number. It's difficult to imagine splitting them up into classes um, because the group culture and the fun that they can have together when they're six is much more significant in their lives than when they are split into small classes with maybe just themselves and one or two teachers with them for child protection reasons um, or a couple of kids in the class. Um, and so we've made the choice as staff um, and as elders to keep those six together and to work with them as a group um, because they're between the ages of six and ten this makes it possible um, and I've been writing the programs for their sessions each Sunday um, to go alongside what James has been programming for the adults in the service because that means that they can follow along and have discussions as family. As we grow, as we get more kids starting to come regularly, we'd love to be able to split into groups so that they can have age sensitive lessons. Um, but at the moment we're focusing on building a community, enjoying that time together and doing things that are exciting for the whole age group. Um, and so if you pray with us, we really pray that there would be more families that we would see regularly be able to come and attend those programs because it builds something um, a group culture that is much more significant in the lives of the kids in the long term. And so continue to pray with us and we continue to work and refine the program as we go along. We've also seen um, some losses in our community and I've been able to accompany um, people through the loss of loved ones over this last season, even leading a funeral um, for someone who passed away close to our community and so um, we just continue to walk with those who are struggling in this season, who need the support and the help um, of just someone to pray and someone to listen as they walk through difficult seasons um, of loss of loved ones but also of significant relationship challenges at this time. And so we continue to trust the Lord for breakthrough where there needs to be breakthrough um, and just the persistence and the hope to keep carrying that um, through the season. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you so much for your encouragement. Um, we look forward to this next um, few months of Advent, or, well, one month of Advent and the next months to see what God's going to do and how this continues to build us as a community together.